The world of the dinosaurs was an era dominated by colossal, powerful, and fearsome creatures. We often imagine them as invincible apex predators or gentle, unassailable giants. But the truth is, life in the Mesozoic era was incredibly brutal, and death could come in unimaginable ways. Fossils are not merely silent bones. They are forensic evidence, frozen for millions of years, that tells the tragic stories of the final moments of these magnificent creatures. Let's explore the worst dinosaur deaths ever discovered, revealed by science through indisputable proof. In the late Cretaceous, the land that is now the Gobi Desert was a harsh expanse of immense sand dunes and arid plains, a place where life was a constant, desperate struggle. It was here in the heart of Mongolia that a 75 million year old tragedy was unearthed, presenting us with one of the most iconic fossils of all time, the fighting dinosaurs. This fossil is not just a collection of bones, it is a scene of primal violence, a moment of mortal combat preserved with impossible perfection. The two protagonists in this grim play were a Velociraptor and a Protoceratops, natural enemies locked forever in death's embrace. The Velociraptor, far from its cinematic portrayal, was a predator roughly the size of a turkey, its body covered in feathers, possessing a formidable intellect. Its most terrifying weapon was not its jaw, but the nine centimeter sickle claw on the second toe of each foot, a lethal tool designed for piercing and tearing. Its opponent, Protoceratops, whose name means first horned face, was an exceptionally resilient herbivore. With a stocky build, a large bony frill protecting its neck, and a parrot-like beak capable of snapping bone, it was no easy prey. The fossil captures the very climax of their battle. Perhaps the Velociraptor had laid an ambush bursting from behind a dune, using its speed and agility to close the distance. The fossil evidence shows it launched a precise and brutal attack. Balancing on one leg, it drove its sickle claw deep into the throat of the Protoceratops, targeting the vital arteries. But the Protoceratops did not die instantly. In a final, desperate act of defense, it unleashed its own powerful weapon, its steel-hard beak. It clamped down on the attacker's right arm, crushing the bone and trapping the Velociraptor in place, preventing it from retreating or delivering another killing blow. The two were locked in a deadly stalemate, neither able to escape the other. And then in that moment of supreme tension, fate intervened. A massive sand dune, perhaps destabilized by a recent rainstorm, suddenly collapsed, burying them both in an instant. Death came not from claw or beak, but from tons of sand that entombed them alive mid-struggle. They died as they had lived, fighting to their last breath, forever bound to their foe in a shared grave, leaving behind a silent legacy of the brutal reality of life and death in the dinosaur world. Not every death in the age of dinosaurs was swift or sudden. Sometimes it was a lingering spectre, a slow and agonizing decline brought on by disease and injury. No fossil tells this story more clearly than Big Al, a subadult Allosaurus whose remarkably complete skeleton was discovered in Wyoming, USA. With 95% of his bones preserved, Big Al has become an invaluable subject of study, allowing paleontologists to reconstruct not just his anatomy, but to read the medical history recorded on his very skeleton. Big Al's life, though it lasted only a decade, was a litany of ceaseless accidents and violence. Scientists have identified at least 19 severe injuries and pathologies across his body. His right ribs show multiple healed fractures, likely the result of a powerful fall or a devastating kick from a large herbivore like a Stegosaurus. His vertebrae show damage, perhaps from a hunting mishap. His right foot also bore a broken toe. These wounds paint a vivid picture of a harsh existence for an apex predator in the late Jurassic. Every hunt was a life or death gamble, and every confrontation could leave permanent scars. Incredibly, Big Al survived all of these traumas. The evidence shows his bones healed, however imperfectly, but there was one injury he could not overcome. The fatal blow came from something deceptively small, a swelling on the middle toe of his right foot. Detailed analysis revealed a severe case of osteomyelitis, an infection that eats away at the bone itself. This affliction may have started with a simple stub of the toe, creating an open wound for bacteria to invade. Unlike his previous broken bones, this infection never healed. It would have caused a constant throbbing pain, causing the foot to swell and fill with pus. 
Big Al would have been unable to put weight on his right foot, making walking difficult and running to hunt impossible. The chronic pain and crippling disability effectively ended his career as a predator. The final weeks of Big Al's life must have been a living hell. Unable to hunt, he slowly starved. His body grew weak, ravaged by malnutrition and agonizing pain. He would have wandered aimlessly, a vulnerable target for other predators. He eventually collapsed, perhaps by a dried up riverbed, and died a slow death of attrition. The story of Big Al is a powerful reminder that even the mightiest creatures could be brought down not by a worthy adversary, but by the invisible and relentless enemy known as disease. In the history of paleontology, few creatures have been so misunderstood as oviraptor, a name that literally means egg thief. This unfortunate moniker was given because the first specimen was found near a nest of what were thought to be Proteoceratops eggs. For decades, Oviraptor and its relatives were depicted as devious nest raiders. However, subsequent discoveries, particularly an extraordinary fossil of a Sitapati, a close relative of Oviraptor, affectionately named Big Mama, not only cleared their name, but told an entirely different story, a moving tale of maternal care and sacrifice. The Big Mama fossil, discovered in the Gobi Desert, preserves a private and sacred moment. The adult Sitipati was found lying directly over a large circular nest of eggs. Its feathered arms were spread wide, protectively blanketing the clutch in a posture identical to the brooding behavior of modern birds. The eggs beneath it did not belong to another species. They were its own, some even containing the fossilized remains of embryos. This discovery fundamentally changed our view of dinosaur behavior, revealing them not as cold-blooded killing machines, but as creatures with complex social lives that included nurturing their young. The death of this mother was as tragic as the misinterpretation of her species life. Like the fighting dinosaurs found in the same region, Big Mama and her unborn clutch fell victim to their harsh environment. The most likely scenario is that a violent sandstorm suddenly descended or a nearby sand dune collapsed. Faced with a wall of encroaching sand, the instinct for self-preservation would have driven any creature to flee. But this Sitipati mother did not. The fossil shows no signs of struggle, no attempt to escape. She chose to stay. She used her own body as a final shield, protecting her fragile offspring from nature's wrath. She remained in her brooding posture until the very end, as the weight of the sand buried her and her nest forever. This was not a death of violence or disease, but one of conscious sacrifice. This fossil provides some of the strongest evidence for the evolutionary link between dinosaurs and birds, showing that complex parental behaviors have deep roots in their dinosaurian ancestors. But more than its scientific value, Big Mama is an eternal symbol of motherhood, a single moment of devotion etched in stone, surviving for millions of years to tell us its poignant story. The world of late Cretaceous Alberta, Canada was a lush landscape of coastal forests and vast river systems, but hidden within this beauty were deadly perils and they did not always come from other predators. Sometimes the ground itself was the most fearsome enemy. The story of a young Gorgosaurus found here is a terrifying testament to this truth. Gorgosaurus, a member of the Tyrannosaur family, was a formidable predator, smaller and more agile than its famous cousin, T-Rex. This particular individual was young, perhaps an adolescent, just beginning to master the skills needed for survival. It may have been this inexperience that led to its tragic end. Its nearly complete skeleton was found in a bizarre posture, unlike any natural death. Its body was buried vertically in ancient river sediment. Its head and neck arched backwards in a desperate pose, as if reaching for a final breath of air. This posture tells a story of a slow and horrifying death. The young Gorgosaurus had likely wandered into a natural trap, a deep pit of quicksand-like mud hidden beneath the shallow water of a river. These sedimentary traps, known as fluvial taphonomic traps, were exceptionally dangerous. The surface would have appeared solid, but beneath lay a deep deposit of fine-grained, water-saturated muck. 
The moment the Gorgosaurus stepped in, it would have begun to sink. Instinctively, it would have started to struggle frantically. But this was the worst possible reaction. Its thrashing movements would have only liquefied the sediment further, creating a suction that pulled it down faster and deeper. The animal's terror must have been unimaginable. Irrevocably ensnared, unable to move forward or backward, it could only feel the relentless pull of the mire, swallowing it whole. It would have roared in desperation, its powerful muscles churning uselessly in the thick ooze. The final arched position of its head and neck is direct evidence of its last moments. A final agonizing attempt to keep its nostrils above the suffocating mud and draw in a few more precious breaths before it was completely submerged. Death came from a combination of exhaustion, asphyxiation and sheer terror. Yet this tragedy became a gift to science. The rapid burial in an anoxic, oxygen-poor environment protected the skeleton from scavengers and decay, resulting in one of the most complete and beautifully preserved juvenile tyrannosaur skeletons ever discovered. In the brutal theatre of the natural world, there is one ultimate rule. Survive at all costs. And sometimes that rule leads to the most horrifying of behaviours, breaking all boundaries. Perhaps no death is more treacherous or grotesque than being hunted and consumed by a member of your own species. The clear and direct evidence for this terrible act comes from the isolated island of Madagascar during the late Cretaceous. The victim, and also the perpetrator, was the species Majungasaurus crenatissimus. Majungasaurus was the apex predator of its ecosystem, a carnivorous machine with an immensely powerful jaw and sharp serrated teeth that were constantly replaced. It was a bizarre looking theropod, a stocky build, a short and deep snout, a single blunt horn on its head and comically tiny arms that were almost useless, even smaller in proportion than those of T-Rex. Despite its strange appearance, it was the undisputed king of its island domain. On Madagascar, Majungasaurus had no rivals. However, its environment was exceptionally harsh. Geological evidence suggests the island experienced severe seasonal droughts. During these lean times, vegetation would wither, herbivores would perish from starvation, and predators like Majungasaurus would face intense competition and the threat of famine. It was in this desperate context that scientists, led by paleontologist Raymond Rogers, found shocking forensic evidence. They excavated numerous Majungasaurus bones that bore deep gouges and scrapes. These were clearly bite marks, indicating the animals had been fed upon, but the question was, by what? The research team conducted a meticulous investigation. They analyzed every bite mark, measuring the spacing between the tooth impressions, their shape, size, and the fine lines left by the serrations on the teeth. They then compared these marks to the jaws of every known predator in that ecosystem at that time. The result was a single chilling match. The bite marks were a perfect fit for the teeth of another Majungasaurus. No other creature could have made them. This was the undeniable smoking gun of cannibalism. The scenario it paints is grim. During a prolonged drought, a weaker Majungasaurus, perhaps old, sick or young, was no match for a larger, hunger-crazed member of its own species. The attack would have been brutal and the death would have been followed by the ultimate indignity of being butchered and eaten by its own kind. This discovery proves that in the ruthless calculus of survival, there is no room for sentiment. For a Majungasaurus, the most dangerous monster on the island was often another Majungasaurus. Through these tragic fossils, we've seen a completely different side of the dinosaur world, one filled with violence, disease, and brutal deaths. Every skeleton is truly a story waiting to be told. If you found these stories fascinating, don't forget to hit the like button to support us. And more importantly, hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future videos on the incredible mysteries of the prehistoric world. Thanks for watching and see you next time.